Shalom, shalom, peace. What's up, y'all? You already know what time it is. It's Manna Monday. That's right. It's a Manna Monday. All praise, honor, and glory to the Most High, man. Hopefully, everybody that's tuning in had a blessed Shabbat and a uh, good weekend. You know what I mean? It's your brother Amath. I acquire first name. IQ is all the same. Represent messengers of the covenant. Um, hopefully, everybody's doing well today as well. Uh, you already know what time it is, man. Busy week, busy week. We got ahead of us, man. A lot of things we got to either look forward to or we have to uh, look beyond. Uh, stay discerning and seeing what's going on in the earth right now. Uh, according to news sources and according to what we just covered last uh, Sabbath, warfare could kick off come Wednesday. You know, Esau wants everybody to have a nice little uh, happy Valentine's and all of that. I'm not saying that. I'm not wishing nobody no damn happy Valentine's Day. All right. If you've done that today, man, you need to repent immediately. Immediately. But I know all of y'all that's tuning in, you don't get down like that. All praises. Uh, if you need to, refer any one of your friends, family, anybody that's confused, refer them to the lesson about uh, Lupercalia and the truth about Valentine's Day that was just done uh, by Brother Adadad this past uh, Shabbat on uh, the Messengers of the Covenant Reloaded page. By the way, it is back up, all praises. And uh, Or you can go on our IQ channel, either one. It doesn't matter, just as long as they get some information. We've made it, man. Number 86, Don't Shoot the Messenger, DSTM. We in the house, all right, all praises. And uh, look, if you need to contact us, it's the Covenant 144 at Gmail. Uh, Instagram is Messengers of the Covenant. If you wish to uh, send your arms or donations in order to help us with this work, uh, or if you just want to, Donate to a, 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 a you know congregation camp, whatever that you find that's doing the works of the Lord, and you can't you know directly be involved, but you want to support. Your arms is always um, appreciative. You can send that to Cash App Dollar Sign IQ of All right. Without further ado, man, let's just get right to the business. Let's get right to the business. All right. Uh, let me share my screen as usual. Make sure you wipe your feet too, man. Y'all come up in here, man. Be rude as hell. You ain't wiped your feet on the map, man. What's up with y'all? All right. Do your brother that favor, man. Wipe your feet on the map when you come in the house by hitting that like button. Uh, much appreciative. So we can get this algorithm kicking and rolling. Uh, we got a lot of work to do as far as rebuilding our channel up and um, getting that momentum going, man. So any and all help is appreciated. You can do so by hitting that like button, man. Sharing the videos. Uh, to your respective uh, social media platforms if you have them. Uh, if not, email them to your email list. I don't care. Get the word out. Right now is not the time to be lollygagging and pussyfooting around. I'm going to be real. All right? We're talking about warfare is on the horizon. That's being rumored in the streets as, a, as it pertains to world affairs in as little as 48 hours. And we ain't talking Eddie Murphy and Nick Nolte. 48 hours. Okay? So... Let's look and see what we got on deck today. Man. Let's look and see what we got on deck. All right. Uh, first off, first off, you see it here. You see it here. Where is this from? CBS News. Okay. Russian units are near the Ukraine and moved into, quote, attack positions. Okay. So no longer are we talking about political posturing. We're not talking about propaganda. We're not talking about an if, when, or maybe. Listen, they're talking about moving into attack positions in Russia and the Ukraine right now, preparing for attack. Okay? This is today's news, February 14th. Russia's moved some long-range artillery and rocket launchers into firing positions threatening the Ukraine, according to a U.S. official. Some Russian units have left their assembly areas the bumper-to-bumper -bumper formation seen in satellite photo photos are beginning to move into, quote, attack positions. So we know that they've already been moving forward uh, closer and closer to the border of the Ukraine. They've been posting up. They're doing drills and whatnot. Now they're actually lifting up and positioning the rockets into firing positions. Reading on, it says, this movement marks a change since Sunday when some of the units had left the assembly areas but had not yet taken what could be viewed as attack positions. The U.S. believes Russia will attack the Ukraine by the end of the week, although it is not certain what form it will take, the official said. So again, you know, Esau's playing games. It's hard to, you know, trust and believe everything that he's saying. Could things be propaganda? Absolutely. Could things be serious? We got to find out. 
We're going to find out. Uh, but we always know. We always know that we have to be vigilant and aware when it comes down to dealing with this heathen, man. Um, one thing's for sure, two things for certain, man. Yahweh Shah already told us that we have to be uh, prepared for wars and even the rumors of wars. So the, the rumors are spreading thick right now. The tea is getting spilled all over these streets in the world. All right. Uh, but we always know. Sirach 12 and 10, never trust an enemy for as iron rusted, so is his wickedness. So, you know, is it propaganda? Is it real? Um, I'm on the side of believing and even actually praying that it does kick off. And you say, damn, IQ, you ready for that? Not that I'm ready, but faithfully, I'd like to believe that it's a sign that the works that uh, myself and other brothers are doing, other camps and congregations are doing, are prospering in the in the light of our people waking up and us nearing closer to our um fulfillment of prophecy and the deliverance of our people. So that's what I'm really waiting on. That's what I'm hopeful of. That's what I'm really praying on. That's what I'm really excited about. You know, it's an exciting time to be alive right now because it's only going and so I'm proving that everything that's been prophesied out that book of ours called the Bible is real. And the detractors and the, and the naysayers and the, um, uh, 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 the ones that's always came up against the word, man, the reprobates and it, listen, they're going to be eating crow for real when everything is all said and done. So, you know, if we're looking to see war going down at the end of the week, very possibly I'm leaning towards more saying, yeah, it's looking that way. Now, is there a chance that there could be some last ditch effort? You know, we covered that last, um, last Sabbath, how the most high works. The most high said, man, the deceived and deceiver is his. What he says goes, how he wants things to perspire, I mean, transpire, is all on the Lord. Okay, let's look at Daniel 2. It's all on the Most High, man. You know, if the Most High says, hey, I see um, an awakening that's going to increase even more. I need to get, if the Most High says, man, I got to make something happen. I got to stir up the pot of the people. I got to actually inspire their spirits to actually be changed and put some fear in them. Because right now, man, our people ain't worried about nothing but chocolates and candies and, and damn hearts and, and uh, teddy, teddy bears and brothers is out here scrambling around trying to figure out what to get their woman, you know, so she, so she can shut up because he knows he's going to catch hell if he come home and he ain't got that gift. If you ain't brought that Valentine's Day basket, if you ain't made that reservation at the restaurant, if you ain't brought her her favorite little piece of jewelry or that bag or them red bottoms, if she, you know you ain't paid her uh, car notes and all that other crap, you know you got hell to pay. You know, brothers, you know, man, the, 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 what is this? February 14th, it ain't got nothing to do with you. Just on a secular level, we ain't even talking about the historic pagan origins of this damn heathenistic festival and custom. Just in the world, you brothers be, you know, the, the women got you by the balls, man, on this day. You were to bow down and do whatever. And if you don't, it's hell to pay. You don't get no day that where you're honored and worshiped and you're, you're, you're given all the pleasantries and, and you don't get that. Not to go off on that tangent, but listen. While the world is distracted about that. Well, niggas is still hung over from the Super Bowl and, 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 and still flooding the streets and the rams and popping fireworks and doing that other stuff, man. War is getting ready to go down to 48 hours, quite possibly. And the most high is sitting back playing chess, and he just may say, you know what? Boom, let it rip. Because you know what? The people need to be woken up even more. Fear needs to be put in their faces even more so that can be used as a tool to wake up my children. Look at this, uh, Daniel 2 and 21. And he changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. So this is how the Most High distributes everything. He gives wisdom to the wise, knowledge to them that know understanding. He wants to sh shift and change uh, positions of kings on the chessboard. He does that. So it's the Most High's call. If the Most High says, hey, this is over with. 
War needs to go down. And it's only par for the course based upon what we're, what, what, what we're looking at in the state of affairs in the world. I mean, we're talking about famine. We're seeing pestilence. We're seeing disease. And you, I mean, um, earthquakes in diverse places. We're seeing the um, volcanoes eruption. We're seeing the wars and rumors of wars. I mean, why not? Why not? Everything else is playing right into right right into um prophetic hands. You know what I mean? So to see a headline like this to say that it, now the Russians are moving into a, attack positions, it only is making it even more of a rea uh, reality. Okay, so reading back on the article, it says. Uh, once the Russian attack begins, U.S. knowledge of what's happening will dramatically decrease. Americans will have no troops on the ground and no uh, reconnaissance planes over the air, and Russian cyber attacks and electronic warfare will blot out communications. You know, they just had another cyber attack. Um, uh, was it a cyber attack? I don't know if it was. A, I think they did. I think there was a cyber attack uh, of recent. I know that I know they said Coinbase went down yesterday uh during the Super Bowl. Um I know they said it uh I know they said Coinbase went down. But um let me see. I was on 11, 12 days, five days ago. Maybe I'm tripping. I think I might have been just thinking about the uh, Coinbase that went down um, yesterday. And just in case. Just in case. Oh, so they were saying that the ad made the, uh, when they put the little uh, uh, QR code on the TV during, the, I guess, the Super Bowl ad, it crashed the uh, crashed the website. So it wasn't a cyber attack, so it's like it. But I could have sworn I read about it. Uh, maybe this is what I, I seen. It said an outage. So I, I, I'm immediately thinking, oh, cyber attack going on. But uh they crashed the site when they advertised the QR code. I guess too many people went up there scanning it and they crashed the site. Who cares? Whatever. We know that it's a lot going on. And, and there's been enough evidences of a uh, cyber attack going on for months now. Okay. Cyber polygon with all of the um all of the uh the drills and the tests that they were doing is all coming to pass right now. I mean, everything is going to, uh, according to plan. Thus saith the Lord. Okay. Uh, U.S. officials say Russia now has 80% of the forces it will need to launch a full-scale invasion, and the rest are en route. En route. More than 100,000 Russian troops are amassed along Ukraine's borders to the east uh, in Russia and north in Belarus. So we see here what's going on. They're in attack positions. All right, let's look at another one. Russian buildup near the Ukraine features potent weapons. Potent weapons. I mean, they're not out there playing. We just see, I just played the video with um, Putin talking about, hey, I know the odds is against us when it comes down to Russia dealing with NATO. He said, but we got nukes. And all you little countries, man, you're going to get drugged into this against your will. Y'all don't really want to be a part of this, but because you've aligned yourself with, with our enemies, with NATO, then you can become a casualty of war just like anybody else. All right, so look, Russian buildup near Ukraine features potent weapon systems, well-trained troops. The forces give Moscow the means to attack the Ukraine from multiple directions, but aren't sufficient to occupy the entire country. This is on the Wall Street Journal. They, they want me to, you know, subscribe if I'm going to get the whole, you know, the whole article. So I'm just giving you all just a little bit. Uh, Russia's enormous military buildup near the Ukraine features some of its most potent weapon systems and provides the Kremlin with the means to attack the Ukrainian forces from multiple directions, which likely would overstretch their defenses. In this buildup, which has quickened in recent weeks, Russia has positioned forces on three sides of the Ukraine and Belarus, Western Russia, and Crimea on a naval on naval vessels in the Black Sea. Look, and they even said that um uh 
Russia had to uh, chase off an American um, naval ship in their waters. In the U.S., they're talking about they not they not involved, they're not close. They're over there creeping. See this? See, really, if that's going on, man, the war done already started. Russian warship chases off the U.S. submarine, uh, Moscow said, says. So, you know, America's talking about, oh, we're just in Poland. We're not really tripping like that. We're not going to get directly involved. Meanwhile, they got a submarine creeping over there in the um, in the seas near Russia. I think it was in the Black Sea. And Russia said they had to chase them up out, out of there. This is why they're moving in attack formations, because they're fearful that actually the Ukraine and NATO is the ones moving closer, getting ready to strike. But the propaganda and the media is going to say Russia is the one who's getting ready to, you know, to get things cracking. But is it the opposite? That's why, you you know, we're dealing with the devil, man. You don't know which one of these damn demons is lying. So look at this. A Russian anti-submarine destroyer chased off a U.S. submarine near the Kuril Islands, forcing it to leave the country's territorial waters, Moscow says Saturday, amid raging tensions over the Ukraine. A Pentagon spokesman asked the AFP for comment, said only, quote, we are aware of press reporting about an alleged naval incident in the Pacific. We cannot confirm the details of this report of these reports at this time. You know, they got to keep it quiet. You know, yeah, well, I can't confirm or deny. No comment. Usually that's usually the mission to kill. You know how that go. Senior administration official says Saturday they had no additional information about the alleged incident. The Russian defense minister uh, ministry said that during the planned military drills, the Marshal Shapashnikov destroyer detected a U.S. Navy Virginia-class submarine in Russian territorial waters near the Kuril Islands in the northern Pacific. See, how, you know, America's trying to creep. You understand? So look at this. What are they doing in the U.K. to prepare? Last ditch for peace. This is it. They've been trying to talk it out all last week. They've been trying to talk about last, di look, next 48 hours could be crucial. Last ditch bid for peace, Boris Johnson plans to whistle stop tour of Europe to hold more talks with world leaders and final diplomatic blitz to avert a crisis in the Ukraine as Kiev demands, meeting with Moscow and other nations to explain its true buildup. So they, you know, Boris Johnson, prime minister of the UK, he's saying, hey, I'm, I'm gonna stop my little, my tour of Europe because I'm already over here trying to clean up my own mess. Let me go holler at, uh, you know, uh, Russia and Moscow and find out, can you at least give me some understanding on why you got 130,000 troops over there, man? Make make this make sense to me. It's looking like you're ready to go, go for broke. And meanwhile, the, the UK got troops over there training the, um, the Ukrainian soldiers. So he's he's over there looking for peace, but at the same time, they're training up soldiers over there. Ukrainian. I spelled that right, probably not. Uh look at this. I'm going off script, but you know what? Ain't no script. It's all spirit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, UK trip troops sent to help train the Ukrainian army to leave the country. So they're talking about the, the troops that they sent. They're training up the U the Ukrainian troops so that they can leave, so they can get up out of there. Not training the UK. You see how they, they try to make these damn headlines, make it sound like they're trying to get the Ukrainian troops to get up out of there. They got to train them how to leave. No. The UK troops are sent to help train the Ukrainian army. They want them to get up out of so they can get up out of there. Armed Forces Ministry Minister says personnel would withdraw after fears of no notice attack from Russia. British troops helping with training in the Ukraine will leave the country this weekend. Do you see? The British troops are the ones leaving. They try to make it sound like UK troops sent to help train Ukrainian army to leave the country. 
it, it, the way that reads, it sounds like the UK troops are training the Ukrainian army to leave and get out. As if, you know, they're not being aggressive or they're not preparing for war. No, the Ukrainian troop, the UK troops that have been over there, that's been training the Ukrainian troops, they're trying to get up out of there. The Armed Forces uh, Ministry Minister James Happy uh, said as he warned that Russia could launch an attack at no notice. Heapy said the small number of UK personnel sent to train Ukrainian troops on anti-tank missiles would be withdrawn alongside about 100, helping with wider troop training as part of an operational orbital. Britain is common with all other NATO allies has said it would not fight against Russia against any Russian attack. Look what they're saying. So they're not going to fight. A point repeated by the minister in a BBC interview, Ukraine is not a member of NATO, although in 2008 it was given a promise that it would one day be able to join. So this is the problem. Plain and simple, NATO and Russia, obviously, they don't get along. Ukraine is supposed to have a relationship with Russia, even though they're an independent nation. They broke free from the USSR. They don't want to have anything to do with Putin, right? They want to be a, a, a sovereign nation. But Putin is saying, well, if that's the case, then get up off of our land because that was Russian territory. And matter of fact, I want that back. So that's why they took um, uh, Crimea back in like 2014. So now they're saying, well, now you're saying you're getting ready to join our enemies. I can't trust you on these borders then. That means that you're giving our enemies even closer access to us and to possibly attack us. So we got to go on the defensive. Do you understand? That's how they, this whole thing is politi uh, politically playing out. But Boris Johnson's acting like, you know, he's he's looking for peace. But you got troops over there sending, um, training the Ukrainians to get ready for war. So by default, by proxy, they're involved in the war. The U.S. is sending sending weapons over there. U.K. sending weapons, training them up, doing all that. by proxy. You are they already involved in the war? But they sit back and say we're not going to fight. But meanwhile, you are fighting because you're helping with the fight. I mean, does that make sense? Come on. So in the last this effort for peace, Boris Johnson plans to whistle stop the tour of Europe to hold more talks with world leaders and final diplomatic di diplomatic blitz to avert a crisis in the Ukraine. As Kiev de 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 uh, demands meeting with Moscow and other nations to explain his troop buildup, the PM will lead a diplomatic blitz this week with the next 48 hours said to be crucial in averting war in the Ukraine. Boris Johnson will make a tour of Europe as other uh, as countries have braced for the looming threat of a Russian invasion. Vladimir Putin's uh, troops are planning to cross the border into Ukraine at any moment. Okay. Uh, Mr. Johnson warned last night that the crisis in Eastern Europe in Eastern Europe was at a critical juncture, and he and other allies will spend the coming hours and days attempting to pull Russia back from the brink. I mean, how how is Russia supposed to take that conversation? when russia has knowledge that you're over there training troops that's getting ready to go to war with them you're gonna go over there and say hey man you need to calm down we we need you to fall back let's not go to war and russia's saying you already over there training them up you already uh, acknowledging that you've got an alliance with my with, with 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 the ukraine with my enemies and you helping them and you're gonna tell me to peace up no 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 that's the type of games they're playing man that's why Russia's like, man, y'all just playing, you playing us for some punks. Like, you can just go over here and train up my enemies, arm them up, do all this other stuff, and then tell me, I need peace. You need to, you need to fall back and get peace. Do you understand? Hold on, y'all. My bad. Uh, 
That's it. So, look, that's the type of games they're playing, man. They're trying to play out Russia to be some punks. That's why uh, Putin is like, well, you know what? If you think it's like that, I got these nukes for you. I got some potent weapons for you. Like, if y'all really want to go there, I got nothing to lose. Nobody's going to win this thing. So either NATO and all y'all back up, stay out of our business, right? Or we can, it can go there. That's really what's going down. All right. So Britain, uh, ple- Britain yesterday pledged further economic support to Ukraine as more than 130,000 Russian troops stood massed at its borders. So if Britain has already pledged to give economic support, they've already chose their side. They've already said who we riding with in this war. So how can you run over here and talk about let's talk peace? It ain't no peace. You done already said I'm riding with them. Not I'm impartial. Hey, guys, you know, how can we help, you know, clear this up and get this straightened out? No, they already chose sides. That's why Russia's not budging. Let's read on here. Uh, Defense Secretary Ben Wallace will attend a meeting with his NATO counterparts in Brussels this week to prepare the Security Alliance's response to any attack on Ukrainian sovereignty. U.S. intelligence briefed by the Pentagon reportedly points to a detailed plan in which Moscow will launch a barrage of missile and bomb attacks this Wednesday, followed by a full-blown ground invasion. So that's how it's going to start. Wednesday, I'm going to be looking immediately. As soon as I get up in the morning, before I start working, I'm looking at, did, did, is there any missile attacks? Any bombs go down while we were asleep? You know? So they're saying the first thing we should be looking for is missile and bomb attacks. And then they get into it on a ground invasion, tanks, you know, troops, everything. Okay. As Downing Street held out hope on a window of opportunity for de-escalation and diplomacy, other departments saw uh, Mr. Wallace cancel a family holiday, but he dragged into a war of wars with allies. Commercial airlines haul flights into Ukraine or divert them from flying over its airspace, sparking fears civilians will soon be stranded. A bullish Russian ambassador Say his leader, Mr. Putin, doesn't give a shh about the threat of Western economic sanctions. We've been saying that for the longest. See? I mean, Moscow further ratchet up tensions as more than 30 uh, Russian ships start a naval training exercise near the Crimea Peninsula. Ukraine is calling for a meeting with Russia and other members of a key European security group over escalating tensions on the border. I mean, this is what it is. This is why they said Putin don't give a damn about um, economic sanctions. Because we've already seen this. Putin heading to China to bolster his ties amid Ukrainian tensions. We've been seeing this all the time, right? They've already, we, we've already seen that he's already you know aligned himself with Moab to establish an independent um, financial system backed by gold. For them to break free from, you know, the the strongholds of uh, the European economic community. So they ain't worried about their pockets getting tapped. Right. And as they're doing that. China is building a nuclear power plant in Argentina as it looks to Latin America. See how China's moving? China's over here saying, well, we need in. Argentina, Nicaragua, I mean, uh, you know, Russia saying, um, uh, uh, Venezuela, Cuba, open up your doors. We we need in, see. All the, all the lands that's been colonized, all the ones that we've been helping out, and you, you owe us now. China is building a nuclear power plant in Argentina as it looks to Latin America. New Deal is the latest Chinese effort to engage with countries in the region using this cutting-edge clean energy technology. But some projects have met opposition over environmental issues, and there is U.S. pressure not to deepen the ties with Beijing. See? As America coming in and say, hey, what, what are y'all doing down there, Argentina? You're supposed to be on our side. Don't get too close with the, with the gooch, man, because uh, you're going to have a problem with us. And remember, you're part of America, South America, Central America, you understand? That's still America. See, we always be just looking at from California to, to, to New York, coast to coast, and from, you know, Detroit down to Texas, Northwest, South, East, 
that's just America. No, America goes down to Central America, South America. This is all Babylon. And they telling Argentina, hey, you better watch what you're doing over there with Moab. Don't get involved with them because you know we don't we don't get along with them. And China knows what they're doing. A recently inked deal to build a nuclear power plant in Argentina is the latest effort by China to engage with Latin American countries using its advanced tech, uh, advanced clean energy technology, part of a broader push to expand its influence in the region. I mean, if you, you can go down to um, uh, 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 I mean, really, go to any South American, Central American country, it's, it's, it's probably a Chinatown everywhere. It's a Chinatown in Argentina. It's a Chinatown in, um, um, man, why can't I think of the, uh, the country down there, man? Wow, I just drew a straight blank. Panama, good Lord. You know, Panama, Jamaica, you know, and Trinidad. China's all over the damn place, man. The influence is heavy. Okay. So they're moving in closer. They're operating just like Esau, man, colonizing, setting up shop, Costa Rica, you name it. China's all over, right? The U.S. 8 billion plant, known as Atucha the uh, Third, will use China's homegrown Hulong One design, located near Lima, about 100 kilo kilometers uh, northwest of the capital, Buenos Aires. It will be Argentina's fourth nuclear power station and will have an in installed capacity of 1.2 gigawatts in an initial life of 60 years. See, they're going down there to establish power and energy so that uh, Argentina can be indebted to China to say, oh, we, we helped you stay afloat. We've helped you, you know, um, with, with, with energy and everything else. Now let us come in and colonize even more. Matter of fact, we're going to be able can, can we, we need to set up some military bases over here. And that's the problem, man. The Latin countries are so needy that they end up sacrificing every damn thing to whoever's willing to help. See? All right. So let's look at this, too. I mean, this is ridiculous. You know I'm, you know I'm getting on them damn pre... I'm getting on the Catholic Church. And I'm not an ex-Catholic, man. I just know the history of that damn folly-ass religion and how oppressive it is and we be thinking, oh, you know, Hispanics got to get together. It's niggas that's Catholics, okay? And a damn sodomite one at that. Black gay priest in New York City challenges Catholicism from within. I told you, they trying to change the whole dynamics of it. I mean, they really just wanted it to be what it is and not hide no more. You know, they talking about, yeah, they want the priest to marry. They want the, you know, the, the sodomites to come out. They're asking the victims of being molested. Did they like it? And are they gay? I mean, these cast men is just unveiling their wickedness. And our people still flooding in these damn cathedrals, man, and masses. Black gay priests now. See, the, 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 hold up. See, this is the, let me give you just a little, little, just a little taste of the history. A little bit. Uh. Look at this. Dumb diversity. Papa Bull. Dumb diversity, right? Let's just look at this real quick. Dumb diversus, the doctrine of discovery, coming out of uh, the Catholic Church, okay? If you don't know what the Papa Bulls is, man, look it up. You can go on his website right here, doctor, doctrineofdiscovery.org, okay? Papa Bulls was like damn near laws and scripts, um, uh, um, Edicts coming out of the papacy as it pertains to everything from damn slavery to ordinances of the church. Let's just look real quick. All right. This is what they look like. And on here, you can get the English, you can get the translations done. You can read the whole Papa Bulls, right? See, establishing the treaties, all of this other stuff. But let's let me let me just give to, to, to this one right here, the one of fourteen fifty two. Pope Nicholas V issued the Papa Bull Dumb Diverses on the eighteenth of June, fourteen fifty two. It authorized Alfonso V of Portugal to reduce any uh, Saracens or any Muslims and pagans and any un, any other unbelievers. So, who's calling the shots in fourteen fifty two? 
the Catholic Church. They authorized. They're the ones who gave the authority to do certain things. They told Alfonso V of Portugal, go out there and get rid of any Muslims or pagans or anybody who didn't believe in Catholicism, anybody who didn't want to bow down to Caesar Borgia, anybody that didn't want to bow down to the cross, anybody that didn't want to get baptized, anybody that didn't want to have to be um, subjected to the, um, the, uh, the man-made doctrines and the paganism that came along with it. They were calling the other people who weren't believers pagans. Meanwhile, by according to biblical standards, they were the damn pagans with the idol worship and everything else. The fornication, the sodomy, the, the whole nine. Okay, now it says the perpetual slavery. Did you did you read that? It authorized Alfonso V of Portugal to reduce any Saracens and pagans and any other unbelievers to perpetual slavery. Now, what did it say? This facilitated the Portuguese slave trade from West Africa. Oh, really? So when we're reading about Deuteronomy 28, 68, you know, the Catholic Church helped facilitate that. And a damn Negro priest, sodomite, faggot, gay, no, whoa, 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 let me, <laughs> I don't want to get the channel banned, man. The sodomite, nigger priest has no idea that the doctrine that he's standing up there upholding that has accepted him for his sodomite lifestyle and behavior were the same ones that brought his ancestors over here by cargo slaves quite possibly you feel me so this facilitated the portuguese slave trade from west africa the same people wrote the bulls of romanus pontificus pontifex on january 5th 1455 to the same alfonso as a follow-up to the dumb diverses it extended the catholic nations of Europe dominion over discovered lands during the age of discovery. Where do you think those discovered lands were? South America, Central America, huh? That's the extension. Oh, you you went and got the you got the Africans over there in the West Africa, huh? You got the Southern Kingdom. Nothing that go over there and conquer the Northern too. Get the indigenous over there, man. Put them in bondage. Put them in the slavery of uh, uh, Catholicism, huh? Along with sanctifying the seizure of non-Christian lands, it encouraged the enslavement of native non-Christian peoples in Africa and the New World. What? Hello? Along with sanctifying the seizure of non-Christian lands, seizure of land, stealing of land. See. Uh, Let me get this in uh, Rebecca. See, Rebecca 2 and 12. Woe to him that built the town with blood and established a city by iniquity. See, the Most High said, man, they're going to be destroyed because how was this place built? How were these lands acquired and taken? What did we just see? Seizure of non-Christian lands. Seizure, meaning they stole and they took it and stood behind a uh, 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 what they considered an authoritative paper they came from the Catholic Church that said, we've got every right to do what we do because we're the Catholic clean Christians. Woe to him that built the town with blood and establisheth a city by iniquity. And they did it by pure wickedness. See? That's what we're looking at right here. Matter of fact, let's just look at the, let's just look at the, the chapter itself real quick. See, and this is a good verse too. Verse three, Habakkuk two and three it says, "For the vision is yet for an appointed time, and but Salakia, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it surely, it will surely come. It will not tarry." See, the vision has been appointed. All of the the prophecies that we're reading. See, verse two it says, "And Yahweh answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it." So when we get this plain prophecy written before us, man, the most I said, you run it. Once you get it, run with it, man. Remember Martin Lawrence had that old comedy special, Run Tell That? That's what we're supposed to be doing. It said, because even though it seems as though the vision is tearing, man, we're looking at the, the, the these prophecies unfolding, 
It said, just wait on it. It's going to come to pass. It's not going to tarry. See? As we're seeing all this right now. Look at this regarding the damn, uh, the wicked, wicked. Because thou hast spoiled many nations, all the remnant of the people shall spoil thee because of men's blood and for the violence of the land of the city and all that dwell therein. Woe to him that coveteth an evil covetous to his house, that he may set his nest on high, that he may be delivered from the power of evil. Thou hast consulted shame to thy house by cutting off many people that have sinned against thy soul. See, they, they're running around here acting like they're doing all of this damn... Um, uh, Christian good workers, good Catholics, and all that. Man, give me a break. They cut off many people and sinned against their own souls, man, by trying to uphold an unscriptural doctrine filled with idol worship and paganism and everything else that was established through blood, intimidation, and murder, forced conversions, stolen land, okay? And you got a damn nigga to. It, sodomite priest he's working to change things not change things for righteousness change things so that sodomites can be accepted man <laughs> good lord we're, we're, this is it I mean I, I just wanted to read that scripture but look at this we're, we'll get back and look at this real quick along with the sanctifying the seizure of non-Christian lands it encouraged the enslavement it encouraged the enslavement of native non-Christian peoples in Africa and in the New World. And this is the, uh, you know, part of the translation here. Okay. We weighing all and singular the premises with due meditation and noting that since we have formally by other letters of our granted among other things free and ample faculty to the aforesaid King Alfonso to invade Search to invade, search out, capture, vanquish, and subdue all Saracens and pagans whatsoever and other enemies of Christ, wheresoever placed, and the kingdoms, dukedoms, principalities, dominions, possessions, possessions, and all movable and immovable goods whatsoever held and possessed by them, and to reduce their persons to perpetual slavery and to apply appropriate to himself and his successors the kingdoms, dukedoms, counties, principles, dominions, possessions, and goods, and to convert them to his and their use and profit, and having secured the said faculty, the said King Alfonso, or by his authority, the aforesaid Infante, justly, oh, justly, lawfully has acquired. Let's see. Didn't we just see that? Establish a city by iniquity? They said they lawfully did it. They said it was lawful. Look at this. Isaiah 10 and 1. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees and that right grievousness which they have prescribed to turn aside the needy from judgment and to take away the right from the poor of my people that widows may be their prey and that, and that they may rob the fatherless. See? They're writing, uh, let me see, what's that other scripture? I think it's in Psalms. Grievousness. Oh, shoot. I think it's in uh, Psalms. See, they established these unrighteous decrees. They said that they lawfully they said they lawfully got this stuff. You see that? Justly and lawfully has acquired and possessed and doth possess these islands, lands, harbors, and seas, and they do of right belong and pertain to the said King Alfonso and his successors. That came via the Catholic Church. Pope Nicholas V issued this out. So anything 1452... 1492, 19, uh, I mean, um, uh, 1619, so forth and so on, all came on the heels of the doctrines of discovery. Psalms 94 and 20, shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief 
by a law. Classic scripture right there. So should we be having fellowship? I'm, I'm going to stop reading dumb the verses. You, you guys can go back and read that on your own. Should we be having fellowship with this? Hell no. But what's he doing? Damn, side of my nigga priest. And that's this is what he is, man. The Reverend Brian Massengale gave a sermon on Sunday, January 30th, 2022, at St. Charles Borromeo uh, Catholic Church in the Harlem neighborhood of New York. That lets you know there's niggas and the Hispanics in there. You in Harlem. Massengale has received recognition for his work on racial justice. He supports the ordin ordination of women, making celibacy optional for Catholic clergy. And as a gay man, he vocally disagrees with the church's doctrine on same-sex relations. Is it the churches or is it the most high? Who do you disagree with? This is how you know that this dude is wicked as hell. Because it ain't the Catholic church's doctrine. It's in the same Bible he's supposed to be reading. Parishioners worshiping at St. Charles Bor uh, Borromeo Catholic Church in Harlem are greeted by a framed portrait of Martin Luther King Jr., a Baptist minister named after rebellious 16th century German priest excommunicated, excommunicated uh, from the Catholic Church. The Reverend Brian Massengill, who sometimes preaches at St. Charles, pursues his ministry in ways that echo both Martin Luther's. <laughs> Lord. And by the way, man, the, this Martin Luther man uh, did the Jews dirty, okay, over in Portugal and in Spain. This dude was wicked. He started off trying to act like he wanted them to just be, be left alone, let them do their thing. And when they didn't submit to Catholicism, he said, man, do them dirty and kill them then. That, that's, hold on. Do I got that book on? Where's my book at? Mm, shucks. I can't find, I can't find my book. I, I'll show y'all the book next time that it's in. It's about the, the history of the Jews. But nonetheless, uh, side note, okay, let me finish this up. Like King, Massengill decries the scourge of racial inequality in the United States. As a professor at Fordham University, he teaches African-American religious approaches to ethics. See, this is how we know. In college and these, in, in, um, you know, university institutions, institutions, right? have been infiltrated now because here this guy is a reverend who's teaching at Fordham University and he's teaching Jake's about religious approaches to ethics so by the time they come out you know you already raised Christian Catholic whatever the case may be traditionally through our family um you know belief systems that we've been programmed in right now you're going to college to try to expand your horizon and get a little bit more institutional thought from our oppressors. And you say, well, good thing that they still got, you know, some religious related classes here. Let me go over here and take this so I can stay rooted with my family uh, traditional thought. And then you get in there and he's giving you a whole nother understanding about ethics and religion and making you think twice about how you was raised Catholic. Oh, you was raised Catholic or Christian to say oh, being a sodomite is wrong. And then he comes in and says, oh, no, no, no. It's okay. Hey, look, I'm a reverend. And I'm your professor. I'm a respected individual, not only in the university level, but in the social level, in the religious institutions. Listen to me. This is about racial inequality when it comes down to, uh, you know, sexual preference. See? Now all of a sudden, the sodomizer are race. So he's going to come in and give you a different approach to the ethics of how you think according to the Bible. So by the time you get up out of Fordham University, your whole understanding is completely twisted. Now you willing to accept the sodomize. You you willing to accept the LGBTQ plus. You want you want the drag queens uh, to be teaching the kids and pat, bouncing them on on their laps at the libraries. You okay with every damn thing because now it's been authoritatively given to you that oh. The book and the way you was raised traditionally and your religious frame of thought is okay with that. And now anybody else that comes against it, they're wicked, they're wrong, they're hateful. That isn't the way Jesus would have done. Jesus loves everybody. 
See, that's how this even it's, it's got um, infiltrated in that that level. All right. So look at this. Like the German Martin Luther, uh, Massengill is often at odds with official Catholic teaching. He supports the ordinate ordination of women, so he wants women teaching, making celibacy optional for the Catholic clergy. And as a gay man, he vocally disagrees with the church's doctrine on same-sex relations. Instead, advocating for full inclusion of the LGBTQ HIV Catholics within the church. Well, we, we, we've seen, you know, uh, the Pope now talking about, uh, you know, the possibility of the Catholic Church changing position on uh, their stance with that. Okay. One last scripture, one last thing I'm going to share with y'all, man, before I get up out of here. Uh, let's look at Hosea, the fourth chapter, man. I don't know if y'all seen this. I don't know if y'all seen this, but uh, very interesting. Very interesting. Hosea 4 and 1. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel, for the most I have a controversy with the inhabitants of the land because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of the most high in the land. So we see why the most high has a strong disagreement and a controversy with what was going on in the land. No truth is being taught. There's plenty of religion. There's plenty of, uh, you know, get rich, rich quick schemes. There's plenty of, um, you know, folly when it comes down to learning how to mix up every little uh, toxic cocktail for Jake's to drink. You know, there's plenty of pole dancing classes, but no mercy. I mean, no truth. There's no mercy. We're seeing our people uh, being, being dead, shot in the streets by not only the police, but by our own people. You know, we're seeing uh, no mercy being shown to us in the court system. Constantly seeing brothers getting out after 30 and 40 years after DNA tests and proved that they was innocent. False testimonies happening. You know, we just got through seeing them diverses, 1452, Papa Bull. No mercy being shown to the quote unquote heathen and pagans that didn't want to bow down to the Catholic Church. See, nor knowledge of the most high in the land. Like I said, there's plenty of religion, there's plenty of folly going on, but when it comes down to true knowledge of the most high, it's not in the land. It's not being promoted. Verse uh, two, by swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery, they break out and blood touches blood. I mean, all of these things the so-called white man uh, is guilty of in the acquisition of these lands and the acquisitions of power that he's had throughout the uh, throughout the four corners of the earth. He's been swearing, lying. He's killed. He's stolen. He's committed adultery. They're breaking out. Blood touches blood. I mean, his track record for uh, violence and for um, uh, lies and broken peace treaties and everything else, man, is touching each other at this point. This is the main verse that I want, though. Therefore, shall the land mourn, and everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish. With the beasts of the fields and with the fowls of heaven, yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. Now, check this out. I don't know if y'all seen this. This is down in Mexico. There's no sound to it. Do you see what that? Do you see what that is? That's a flock of birds, yellow-headed blackbirds, just dropped out of the sky in massive numbers, dying. And they're still trying to figure out why. Some are saying, "Oh, they some got confused and ran into an electrical line." I don't see no electrical lines. They said maybe some of them inhaled some toxic fumes. Uh, come on. A lot of these are just speculative guesses. But let's look at this one more time. Remember, the scripture said the fowls of the air are going to be taken away too. Look at that. Not all of them died, but a massive amount of them. Didn't see how they all left in the street? The ones that survived, they, they got up out of there. But what would cause that to happen? And that ain't the only place. That ain't the only place. See? That ain't the only place. Look at this.
Moment, hundreds of birds suddenly drop from the sky in Mexico, leaving dead bodies strewn across the sidewalk, right? The birds were flying south to Mexico from Canada for the rest of the winter. Hundreds of them died, right? That was in Mexico. Here they go. Laid out on the ground. Okay. But, look at this. Starlings dropped dead from the sky found in Pembroke Sire Road. I don't know where Pembroke Sire is. It sounds like it's, you know, somewhere in the uh, in, in England and whatnot. They don't know if it's the 5G. They don't know what, what it is. But something to knock them down. Look at this. Officials confirm around 200 starlings had died after being found near the villages of Waterston, Waterston and Hazel Beach, uh, Pembroke Shire last week. Let's see, where is this at? So we can just be clear. Yeah, Wales. So it looks like that's over in uh over in the UK. Okay. Yeah, see, the UK, Wales. I said it sounded like that. Uh, but here, okay. So that was in Wales, 200 died over there. Mexico, hundreds died over there. See? And then just what, a, a couple months back in Texas, all them, them, them fish then, uh, fell out the sky and died? Let's look at that real quick. Remember this? Hmm. Fish fell from the sky in East Texas. That was just a few months ago. Are you saying we're not in the last days? You're talking about war? You're talking about fish dropping dead from, from all over the day? Uh, fish dropping dead from the sky? Birds dropping dead from the sky, wars, rumors of wars, inflation and, and, and famine picking up at a heavy high rate, right? I mean, it's going down. So you've heard her here. We've completed another DSTM number 86. All praise, honor, and glory to the most high, man. Hopefully everybody have a blessed evening. Make sure that you've wiped your feet on that mat. If you haven't already, man, go back and hit that like button. Don't do your brother wrong. Come on. Do your brother right, all right? Uh, most I permit, I'll see y'all, uh, Wednesday on the hump day. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll see where we're at because Wednesday is supposed to be go time according to reports. So, uh, let's see what it do. All right. Uh, again, if you'd like to donate, make sure you hit us up, um, you know, on uh cash app, dollar sign IQ of my, if you want to reach out any questions, anything you want to, uh, desire for a, a learning topic, whatever the case may be. The covenant 144 at gmail.com and on instagram you know we are on instagram now we're on a late freight you know but nonetheless we're there messengers of the covenant um uh, follow us on instagram still getting used to it fig trying to figure that whole thing out man but we got it all locked down man all praise on the glory to the most high man it's gonna conclude dstm man and as always fear the most high keep the commandments and don't ever shoot your